how many food allergies we have now. If we stop and think about it, like we didn't talk about gluten allergies. We didn't talk about all the bazillion allergies we have now. Do you feel like that's because foods are not giving us the same nutrients and that we've got so many toxins in our water, so many antibiotics that people are taking? What, what is causing all those allergies? So it's from a disruption of the composition of the gastrointestinal microbiome. You know, all the things you and I and your audience have been exposed to, like common antibiotics, amoxicillin, azithromycin, et cetera, wipe out literally hundreds of different species in the gastrointestinal tract, in the colon. Well, once you wipe out the good guys, some of the fecal organisms start to proliferate. E. coli, Cyprobacter, Klebsiella, they proliferate. The odd thing is they also, and this surprised me, I, I was really taken by surprise when I started to think about SIBOs as you know, small intestinal bacterial overgrowth. So fecal organisms proliferate in the colon, then ascend up to 24 feet of small bowel. Mm -hmm. And fecal microbes in the small bowel are extremely inflammatory. And when they die, mm -hmm. they some of their breakdown products enter the bloodstream, as you know, a process called endotoxemia. Right. And that's part of the whole process that leads to food intolerances. So the vast, not all, but the vast majority of food intolerances are due to this process, this multi-step process. SIBO, fecal organisms, endotoxemia. And the small bowel is especially susceptible to this because it only has a single layer mucus barrier. It's not suited to have fecal organisms mm -hmm. while the colon has a thick two layer mucus barrier because that's where all these fecal microbes are supposed to be. So one other name for SIBO is fecalization. <laughs> it's the proliferation mm -hmm. of fecal microbes in the small bowel. What convinced me just how widespread SIBO was, was the av availability of this device, the air device. You blow into it, it's a real time sensor. So conventional testing for SIBO is flawed uh, and it tends to underestimate mm. severity. So I, th I think this air device is an improvement over, because it's a real-time mm. sense, you blow directly, you put your mouth on, you blow directly into it. And what surprised me though, was when I started talking about this and thousands of people started testing themselves, it was the exceptions who tested negative. Now we could question the validity mm. of the test, except that what I saw happen was people would test positive. By the way, the instructions that come with the device are not right. I, I did call the inventor, Dr. Mm. Angus Short. He's a, a scientist. He's an engineer in Dublin, Ireland. And I said, Angus, I, I know you invented this for people with IBS, your bowel syndrome, on a low FODMAPS diet. I said, but that's not really what this is. I'm telling the inventor what he invented. <laughs> it's really a mapping device. You can use it to map mm. where microbes are. You use time and you can tell where they are. So oh, now he knows they're trying to change the, the labeling and instructions, but because he has some regulatory hurdles to get over. Um, but that is how you use it. You use it, you consume some of that bacteria metabolized. We use inulin uh, because it's broadly okay. metabolized by multiple species of SIBO. And then you yeah. time how fast you turn positive, zero to 10. Let's say you started at 1.2. If it jumps to nine, that's positive. A jump of right. uh, four would be positive. Yeah. So yeah. when I started having people do this, I was shocked. Now, even better, people would take some steps to eradicate their SIBO and they would test negative. And they would say things like, mm. I finally broke my weight loss plateau or my rheumatoid arthritis is now gone or my hemoglobin A1C that dropped from 12.7%, terrible, to 6.1%, much better, but still terrible, <laughs> is now 4.8%. Right. I saw all those residual problems go away. So is this a test that, that is accessible to everybody? Is it an easy test to do? It is easy. It's easy to use. So the instructions on the actual use of the device are okay with the instructions that come with it. But the interpretation how to use the timing fa factor is in my super gut book. And, and perhaps in future when Angus Short catches ah. up, he'll put it in the device itself. But right now I have the full instructions. So the key here is you consume something that bacteria metabolize. So in the lab, they use lactulose, usually a non-digestible sugar. Hmm. We use inulin mm -hmm. because inulin has, in other words, what if you, you choose a sugar or a carbohydrate that only some microbes consume, but not the ones you have, mm -hmm. you'll test negative. So I picked the, uh, the um, prebiotic fiber or carbohydrate that has the widest species can metabolize, can metabolize this thing. So we chose inulin. So typically two, two teaspoons of inulin, like in your cup of your coffee, a cup of coffee or something. So test baseline, consume your inulin, then test every 30 to 45 minutes. If you test positive, a rise of four units within the first 90 minutes, you've got SIBO. After 90 minutes yeah. up to 180 minutes, three hours, it's not quite clear because that could be distal ileum SIBO or it could be just mm -hmm. normal colonic fermentation. So that's where some judgment is required. So if, if somebody says, you know, I tested and I, I went positive at 
uh, 110 minutes or whatever. Is that positive? Typically, it's not regarded as positive. But what if the person says, but you know, I have, I've had diarrhea unexplained for years. I have panic attacks or I have rosacea or restless leg syndrome or polymyalgia, uh, I'm sorry, or um, fibromyalgia. Fibromy in other words, conditions that are extremely highly associated with SIBO. Even with a negative test, I would say you've got SIBO. So there's some judgment also involved.